Welcome, Spartans, to Halo TV Plus, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Oren, and on Halo TV Plus, my guests and I recap Halo's original TV show, Halo the Series, and we discuss its contents and unique canon within the Silver Timeline. Joining me again to discuss Season 2, Episode 1, Sanctuary, is Ian. Welcome back, my friend. Hey, Oren, glad to be back. Look at that. You're not anywhere near season one, and now we got you for a second episode of season two. How did we do it? Movie magic or podcast magic. Movie magic. magic. (laughs) Podcast magic. Well, just to kind of dive right into it, as you know, or if you don't know, welcome to Halo TV Plus. This show publishes a commentary podcast episode and an analysis podcast episode each week to accompany the Halo the Series television episode. So this is the analysis episode. In a moment, Ian and I will highlight key scenes from Sanctuary that we believe need further analysis. We will break down the scene's effectiveness on screen, what it means for the overall story, tie-ins the core canon knowledge for context, or anything in between, or in actuality, more so in this case, what we didn't see in this episode. Earlier this week, i.e. yesterday, if uh, in terms of our release calendar, we released the commentary episode for Sanctuary where we discuss the whole episode while watching it. If you missed it, I recommend listening to that episode first before listening to this analysis, but it's up to you, however you want to listen, but we touch on a lot more during that hour plus than we're going to touch on on this episode, which will probably run about 20 or 30 minutes. Before we get started, I have a little bit of housekeeping. If you're new to the show, like I said, welcome. Halo TV Plus is part of Evolved that hosts a variety of other Halo podcast shows, Podcast Evolved, HCS Pro Talk, Mission Debrief, Builds with Blocks, and Halo Book Club. You can learn about each of those shows on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. Evolved hosts another show called I Would Have Been Your Podcast, which is a Patreon-exclusive podcast for our Patreon subscribers. If you're interested and want to learn more about what it means to be an Evolved patron, you can head over to Patreon.com slash Halo Evolved. Patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, access to our 18-song soundtrack, unique swag, access to our private Discord channel with the hosts, and more. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. Shout out to you, Ian, again for keeping up with everything. And if you're listening to I Would Have Been Your Podcast, Ian's done an amazing job over there. He's been trying to get me on the episode for the last year or so, and it will happen one of these days. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we try not to. Uh, we try not to only talk Halo on that show. Um, not always successful. Um, obviously, <laughs> we're all we're all very into Halo. Obviously, so um, it's it's hard to not bring it up at all. But uh, we try to talk about some other stuff uh, as well as as Halo. So uh, yeah, please if you uh, if you are all interested in kind of just hearing the host talk about uh, this and that and maybe going off on some. Uh, random tangents and rants uh yeah you can join us over there uh you can hop up on the the patreon if you haven't already you can join and uh and get that uh, feed for uh well for free once you uh once you join the patreon so um yeah that's uh that's what we do over there so i would love to have more people on for sure well awesome thank you very much ian so sanctuary so on a commentary episode we talked a lot about really a lot of the scenes and Kind of preparing for this show, you and I were discussing what things we wanted to talk about more. And through the conversation, we realized that there's there was really a lot that was left out of this episode. And so we kind of wanted to touch on that, namely some characters. and Because, I mean, we don't really know what events are left out of this episode versus that are just going to be saved for later. But uh, I didn't even notice that Miranda Keys was not in the episode until the very end. And Parangoski gave me a surprise when she just turned up and I kind of forgot she was not there until she had just appeared there. So so we'll talk about kind of what we think those characters are up to because we, we haven't seen them, maybe why they are in the shadows or just not on screen just of yet. Uh, we also have Halsey, who we've definitely got some information about, but we don't know what really to believe and kind of questions surrounding Cortana, how we're going to bring her back into the fold. So, Ian, I'll let you just pick one of those characters um, that, that kind of speaks to you in terms of, you know, where do you think they are? Why do you think they weren't in this episode? Do you think we're going to see them in, this, in the next episode? And kind of what do you want from them to kind of have their debut moment in season two? Yeah, so I guess we'll start with the big hitter. Um, I think the most 
influential character that we didn't see at all. She was mentioned briefly uh, a couple times. I know the Soren, Soren and that those scenes, I believe, brought up Halsey. And I don't recall, she may have come up a little bit in some of the other scenes, but uh, it's Dr. Halsey is, uh, is who I'm talking about. And, and she didn't show up at all other than a couple brief mentions. Um, and yeah, I, you know, she's obviously the, she's sort of the big bad of season one, or at least, uh, I don't know what, 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 what do you call that role? Maybe an anti-hero if you want to call yeah, her that. Yeah, I don't know, but right, I, mean, I don't know what to call that exactly. She's just but... kind of on her own side. She's, right. she doesn't conform, right. she goes against protocol, she, she is there to, for her own means, and she, she is in opposition with a lot of characters, which is a very antagonistic thing to do in storytelling. So you kind of get that angle, but I, I, I wouldn't really go as far and say if she was the season one antagonist, but she was definitely an opposing force throughout season one with uh, most of the other characters. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause like, obviously the, you know, it's, it's UNSC versus covenant is the, the halo story very broadly speaking, but in terms of, character development um and and in character interaction she she did i mean i think she kind of did feel fill that role of antagonist only because you know the you know the the story beats of season one were were chief exploring his humanity and learning his his background and then learning what halsey did to him right and and kind of learning that she although he you know thinks of her as sort of a motherly figure that she was really obviously not a a good person to him and and he you know, turns on her basically towards the end of that season. And, um, you know, without spoiling, I guess, too much of season one, although, you know, we're talking about season two here is, um, you know, she she sort of runs or she she gets away. And then I think it's kind of it's implied that she they think she's dead. But then obviously we see her at the end. So we know she's not. Um, so what I so I think is is going to happen. We didn't see her this episode, but we did get introduced to. Uh, Ackerson, which is, uh, no, you know, from the little we've seen in, in episode one of season two, and then what we know of Ackerson as a character in the main lore is he's going to fill a similar role in that he's the he's the good, you know, he's on the good guy's side, but he's he's got his own motivations. Oni's got their own motivations, and and we're going to have him basically set up as sort of the uh, the the. The vi- not the, uh, villain, yeah, villain's a strong word, but like the just the uh, the person that that chief is going up against character wise in the in the season two story. So I I presume that Halsey's going to co- sort of come back as uh, a little bit redeemed in that we'll see her. I'm imagining we're going to see her in the next episode. Uh, again, we mentioned that towards the end of the commentary episode of. This you know the season uh, episode one of season two is it's called Sword is is this the second episode so I'm assuming we're gonna see Sword base I assume we're gonna see Halsey and we're gonna get her set up and her part of the story so I, that's where I'm guessing it's gonna go is is she's gonna she's kind of still obviously Chief doesn't really get along with her very well or all the Spartans just because of what they know about her and what she did and all that and obviously Soren is uh, aligned on that respect. Um, but I assume, I assume we'll see her kind of take the chief side, maybe out of necessity in that, um, you know, whenever we do see the covenant show up, uh, at reach or wherever, um, and then, you know, and then maybe with Ackerson as well, uh, presumably kind of being the, uh, Spartan three person who's trying to replace the Spartan twos have Halsey being, uh, the pro Spartan two pro spill silver team pro master chief side. So I, I, I kind of feel feel that she's going to fill that role, which is a similar role that she has filled in the books as well, as she's sort of the, she's the good guy, but everyone, no one really likes her. Um, she's, she's very abrasive. And she's also obviously knowing from the lore, she's, she's not a good person, right? She's just not, despite what the fan base. Yeah, she's very um, selfish. She, well, she's extremely selfish. And obviously, you know, kidnapping children and all that stuff, you know, they, she tries her best to explain that away and um, make it sound like she did it out of the goodness of her heart to save humanity. But obviously we know that's not really the case. So I assume that's where, where she's going to end up, which is, which is good, I think, because that's a similar role that she has filled in, in the core canon 
in the uh, in the main timeline is that she's she's on the good guy's side. Uh, she's a necess- She's she's needed to be on their side out of necessity, but um, no one really gets along with her. No, not particularly well. Um, but yeah, I think I think you're right. We're going to. I feel like we have to see her the next episode because she was absent in episode one. I would like to see kind of how she's made along over the last six months, kind of being on the run. And with being the name of the episode called Sword, it'll be interesting to see if if she is, if Sword is like a Oni facility, because she had her own like lab underneath Sword Base in, in the core canon. And so it'd be yeah. interesting if like they basically repurpose Sword Base to being her makeshift sort of like base of operations where it doesn't really do anything with the UNSC or if in fact sword bases, they kind of keep that true. So it'd be, it, it's going to be interesting to say it again, to see how those two will kind of play out since Halsey is now not really affiliated with the UNSC. But I do think that Halsey will have some sort of connection to Cortana because she was also absent this episode. And I feel like they could have Cortana could have just been locked away somewhere in the UNSC or in Oni after Cortana was removed from the Master Chief. But just like in season one, when they're like Halsey and it was basically removed from the equation, she was able to open a back door that Cortana was able to nav- navigate and they were able to discuss and talk about things and do stuff. So I can kind of see things happen in a similar way to where. Uh, Halsey has Cortana to kind of help her do whatever plan that she's trying to pursue and it, it would be interesting if she actually was just still on a reach like I it was something I was kind of thinking about like yes she could be off planet or maybe she went off planet uh, which is what was hinted at at the, the end of season one but it'd be interesting if she just wanted to stay close to Fleetcom and just be kind of out of sight while being so close to the proximity of things but um, but yeah, like it, it'll be interesting to kind of see how she plays out because, like you said, she's not very liked. She's very much her own individual, self-centered, and she's she's also wanted. So like, she has crimes that she hasn't answered for, and that will be interesting to see how long that continues, or if that's going to be forgiven once the Covenant attack, and that's kind of just you know, history, so to speak, like put aside our differences. So then we can continue on with doing kind of like, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. Uh, or maybe that's not the right, Never mind. I, I well, I know, I know. Here. But, <laughs> I know but you know what I'm saying, where like when the covenant come, like how much of a, how much are you really going to stay on the fact that like these atrocities happened? Like you kind of right. let that go for the sake of survival. So, yeah, it'll. I'm. I'm interested to see how and when she comes back. I was a big fan of Natasha McAholm in the first season. Played a really great Catherine Halsey, and interested to just see how she continues to take the character because she can Halsey can just be so manipulative and so self centered. Yeah, yeah. You make a good point because yeah, like you said, she's at the end of this for season one. She's yeah, a wanted criminal, uh, which in core canon doesn't really happen until. It's kind of like a post-war thing. Um, it's kind of like what, like right after, I think. I can't remember exactly where it first crops up. I know it's like the Kilo 5 trilogy that's really uh, pushed pretty hard. But um, yeah, so she's sort of the wanted criminal, not until after the, the war in, in Core Cannon. And now we know we're here in the midst of the war or you know, coming up to what, presumably the fall of Reach. And, and she's already a wanted criminal. So does that mean... Like you said, is is she sort of hiding out in her own sort of secret lab? Is she sort of being supported by you know some some section of Oni secretively that they're kind of hanging on to her and working with her, but pretending that she doesn't exist and they don't know where she is? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Is is what is that sort of relationship between her and the rest of Oni and the UNSC? Um, obviously, publicly, she is wanted. Uh, privately, Oni may understand that she's needed to, uh, you know, find Forerunner uh, or decode Forerunner relics or or whatever it may be. So um, it'll be interesting to find out what 
exactly like how that how she exactly fits in there in the story um yeah because she's she's obviously key to a lot of that stuff determining or uh, like decoding and, and learning about the forerunners in the core canon and presumably that's going to be the same role that she fills here in, in this season and upcoming season so um yeah i'm, I'm curious to see where, where she goes like where you know where she kind of falls in that uh, spectrum from wanting criminal to uh quote unquote savior of humanity now do you think how do you think cortana ties into all of this like do you think cortana is still communicating with halsey kind of like what i think or do you think Mm. um cortana might still be amongst unsc oni sort of control so to speak and um where do you think the cortana story will kind of go that's a good question i i'm not really sure i think from having from talking to you now and and re-watching the episode and all that i'm guessing you're probably right she's either in communication with halsey or she's with halsey um but yeah i don't really know because it we sort of other than we saw or i guess we didn't even see we heard from cortana at the very beginning of episode yeah, one. just the beginning there of and i i and i want to say you, well, she was still under the control, but I feel like she was talking directly to Chief, but she was also talking to someone else. And I'm curious yeah. who that someone else is, because, uh, like, is that other person Halsey? Is that other person, like, one of the doctors or nurses that are in the room? Is it maybe one of a, an Oni operative that, you know, like, maybe Ackerson or or Admiral Keyes? Someone, like, it, I'm curious of who that person is, if it means something, because it... it, it if they come back to that scene in like a flashback or something, it'd be to get more of a perspective than just that one shot going in on Chief's face. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. I don't know. I, I don't know if if we're going to like find out that that ends up being Halsey or whatever. I'm I'm a little bit confused about that whole plot thread with her, you know, at the end of season one. He, he what does he die, I guess, sort of. And then she sort of takes control of the armor um, and then basically becomes chief effectively at the end in that battle um you know and then like what's so what exactly is going on you know they're trying to save him but like they have to disconnect her for some reason and it's not i guess it's not extremely clear the issue i guess she's sort of like mind melded with her him maybe i you know i don't know so it's yeah i don't know i don't i'm, I'm a little bit iffy on where that part of the the plot's going obviously she's coming back and obviously her and chief will be re- reunited at some point um but I don't know if we're really going to see him and her reunited fully this season, or if that's going to be we're going to sort of try to walk back the sto- for you know season one and, and end up at the end of season two at sort of kind of the you know end of Halo Reach, beginning of CE thing where where they're they're sort of newly introduced right at the end of uh, end of Reach. Um, you know, core canon's a little confusing on that part, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you know that's. In core canon, that they're they're really only introduced to each other, um, basically at the end of the fall of Reach, uh, or or no, sorry, I guess it's technic. Well, it's tech. What is it before or during or? <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's a little muddy, which, but uh, you know they're not really yeah. together all that long until right, the right. Covenant attack Reach and everything hits the fan, and then he hops on Pillar of Autumn and yada yada yada. Yeah. So yeah, their their time together. I mean, they have a lot of kind of growing up together in those in that reach moment but it's really when they're on the halo that they really start their relationship i would say yeah yeah exactly so yeah i'd be curious i'm curious to see if yeah, we end up kind of walking that back and ends up being sort of ends how halo reach ends with you know maybe not noble team but like her and him are reintroduced right at the end and they you know maybe they end up i, I presumably they end up on the pillar of autumn or something like that um yeah, I don't know. I, I really, I'm not quite sure yet. That's kind of maybe where I'm. I'm thinking the story's headed, but it's is we don't know enough really right now to to make a a decent guess. I don't think. Yeah, it, it is really too soon, but I it would be great to kind of see them reconnected in a similar way to Core Cannon. I feel like there will be some sort of reunion scene. Like they're not necessarily retconning everything. Like Cortana is definitely. That like all of that happened. You saw Chief's sort of like PTSD sort of therapeutic yeah. response to not having her around and in, and kind of in his head. 
And even though he was so resistant for it in season one, he's he's having like, you know, you don't know what you have until it's gone type of mentality. So mm-hmm. it, it'll be it should be heartwarming when she does return. I mean, when I, even when I was rewatching season one, like when Cortana appears and says her famous line that, you know, the, the king and the pawn go back in the same box at the end of the game, like like that still brings a smile to my safe because it's Jen Taylor. It's this visualization of Cortana like. I feel like if they're able to capture a similar moment and like Chief and Cortana are able to reconnect and then you have a different sort of tension between the two or a different type of relationship that builds between the two in this new season can still be very rewarding. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for that reunion whenever it, it, it happens. Um, I would imagine it would happen before the fourth episode or at least during the fourth episode because that's when... The, basically the whole episode well, I don't know what the whole episode is but that's when the uh reach is going to be invaded presumably so right uh but yeah I think I think it would be great for them to integrate Cortana back into Chief in you know maybe a more canon canonical way you know maybe maybe yeah. they have the whole yeah. disc thing that she's on she's in the chip and so you have to put the chip in the helmet and all that kind of <laughs> stuff instead of her being you know, inserted into his spinal column and like amygdala or whatever, whatever part of the brain connects to the spine. But, um, (laughs) right. But yeah, it'll, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Yeah. It's just, it's weird because, you know, obviously in the games, Cortana served the role of sort of narrator. Like she's the, she's the, uh, other, she's the sidekick sort of, uh, for master chief because you only have master chief and she's obviously the one he talks to and she's the one who sort of explains the story because he's the empty vessel he's you know people don't say you but i feel like he's more just the camera to the story he's the player like you're supposed to well right he's the player but like he's from a story standpoint he's he's the camera you know (laughs) he's not like he's he's he doesn't even he's not really a character at least in the games or at least particularly in in combat evolved right he's he very he says very few lines and and he's you know cortana kind of explains what's going on and you're sort of walking through the story with him um but you don't have that issue in the tv show because he's got all the rest of um silver team and obviously it's a tv show so he you don't need to be in combat all the time right it's just it's uh you know it's a very different setup so i'm curious to see how that plan pans out because she isn't really needed technically to inter- you know be in his head but at the same time obviously lore wise and and fan base wise you can't not have cortana so yeah i don't know i don't know if she gets she'll get introduced soon you could have the show without cortana i think that, you know like you don't need that relationship but since that relationship is such a foundation in the halo right. franchise I, you know, it, it, one way or another, it's going to come back. Well, think of like Halo Reach, the game. Um, you have Noble Team, which is, what is it, six? Six of them, right? This Noble Team. And yep. there is no Cortana. I mean, they have, what is it, Dot? Anti-Dot or they whatever They have Anti-Dot. Is. And and they also, but they, they also talk and interact together. And, and you, right. exactly. as Noble Six, are a relative silent protagonist, again, because you you assume that's Spartan and mm-hmm. that, is, that is you for the game. But I mean... They're two different mediums, right? So, like, it's kind of that. That's, that's why there's a lot of controversy well, around Chief having so much emotion and like taking off his helmet and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Because, like, you don't. It's it's not one to one the way you characterize a video game character and characterize a television character. Yeah, and some interpretations do more of something and less of other things. And we have what the TV show is kind of giving us, but you. To, in order for it to be something other than just sci-fi show, for it to be a Halo show, mm-hmm. you need to have that Cortana and Chief relationship because yeah, as yeah. each game goes on, it really amps up both of their characters. Yeah, I just meant like yeah in in the game Halo Reach, obviously you don't have the 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 AI as the the sidekick. You've got a team of six people, and like you said, playing as Noble Six, you're again the silent protagonist, kind of that same camera role of you're sort of walking through the story and you know all the other members of noble team are the the other characters interacting with you and interacting with each other so you didn't you don't have that necessity so and i I only bring that up because we are we are sans cortana right now 
we are walking into effectively the fall of Reach story. Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to make this unfold in terms of Halo Reach the game versus the fall of Reach the book, or where you know how much of of each they're going to reach they're going to take from, or are they going to kind of tread their own path a little bit? I don't know, but you know that's why I'm 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 sure they're going to reintroduce her soon in you know the next episode or two. I'm just not sure that she's going to get you fully introduced with Chief as her as his companion for most if not all of the season, you know. And I don't and I, that's the thing I don't know where the season's going to end up cuz um does does Silver Team survive? Um you know, how or you know does does some of Silver Team yeah. survive or does it yeah, or does Silver Team get fragmented? Yeah, there's a few theories out there. It, it's weird because in the lore, obviously, blue team doesn't. All of blue team survives, um, but at the same time, Chief's the only one left uh, in going into CE, and and they don't get reintroduced in the video games at all. They don't get reintroduced until in you know in the story in the in the core can until well, I know actually until after Halo Four, right? Because he goes into cryo and all that. So um, yeah, so I don't know exactly where they're gonna go with that. Well. Yeah, I mean, in, in the games, it is Halo 5 and, and the extended lore. I mean, mm-hmm. you have the Escalation story where they fight the Didact and all that. Right. That happens after Halo 4, but before Halo 5. And so there's... Yeah. There, and, and Blue Team, for the most part, stays together with just the three of them and do other things. Right. With, yeah, Blue Team does stay together, or or they at least come back together without Chief. Right. And I think they even meet and hang out like between some of the games i think yeah well linda's on cry in cryo for a bit they're going into ce and then but she ends up coming back story wise relatively soon and i think they're together minus chief like during the the battle for earth right i think it's i think it's all the blue team minus chief i i if i remember correctly so yeah that, i mean as a team they come back pretty soon i i'm more curious because obviously they're they're main characters of the story right uh silver team um if you're going to go into like a Halo CE story, you can't really just go into just Chief because what are you going to do? I mean, I guess they could be some sort of B, B story with the rest of the team. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's all about how they set that up. Yeah. I mean, unless they're going to get rid of them for good, you can't just like not have the main characters of a show not there for a season. I mean, I guess you technically can, but it's just. Yeah, I think um, Aaron had a I uh, like an idea that like, each each character vanek kai and riz all ended up doing and kind of ends up doing their own thing so then chief is more more or less alone by the end of the season so then he can be on the ring alone i mean the story wise i I mean i wouldn't i wouldn't be all that upset if chief wasn't alone you know like if 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 i mean if we're predicting the end of the season like if it was silver team plus cortana a few unsc and they go and now they're all refugees on the ring and it's hostile with the flood excuse me with the flood and the covenant are also there and they're fighting the covenant and kind of finding you know making their own home base and yada yada like i feel like that that still has plenty of material to make its own story like it doesn't need to be a one-for-one remake of ce no it doesn't and that's not my my concern isn't the re it you know you're not well, obviously, we're not doing a one for one remake of of any of the Halo. But my more my bigger concern is that interaction between Chief and Cortana works best when it's just them and they're sort of on their own doing their own thing. When you have if you throw Silver Team in there as well, now you've got that interaction and then you have the Cortana interaction, and we saw that in season one. Yeah, and it doesn't work very well because yeah. they're different interactions. Okay. Yeah, I see. Do you know what I mean? Saying. Like they're just they're different interactions. Yep. And when you have he she, he can only hear her, and then they can hear. Like it's it's very confusing for the audience, I think, and I, I don't think it works very well. So that's why I'm like, if if they go back in that route, I'm gonna I might I'm probably gonna be upset because I don't think it works very well. I mean, maybe they can make it work, uh, and I just you know I'm I'm not a you know I'm not a writer. I'm not a I don't I don't do a film or anything like that. So um, maybe there's a way to make that work. I just don't think character wise that's a good way to do an interaction. Um, and and I'm that that's kind of where I'm like I don't know where we go. Do we get rid of Silver Team? Do we like yeah? What, do we separate them? What do we do? I don't know. But Cortana has to come back, right? I mean, she has to. There's, there's no way we we yeah. continue on without Cortana. Yeah. So. Uh, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to see how they handle it between the interactions of all the characters and uh, the inclusion of Cortana. And yeah, maybe that's 
justification for having her reunited with Chief towards the end of the season to kind of account for Silver Team still being around or at least being in close proximity to Chief. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah time sure. will tell over the next couple of weeks as we dive into more of the episodes. Right. Um, I did want to touch upon uh, two other characters before we sign off. Uh, that's uh, Miranda Keys and uh, Corporal Perez, um, Talia Perez. Uh, we, I guess we'll start with Miranda. She was not here this episode. Um, she kind of had a up and down season one. She kind of would take a step forward, sometimes two steps forward, but then be pushed back another two steps. And so she was always trying to get ahead of the ladder, but then just always falling back down. Um, she has a lot of sort of scientific and wanting to find about find out things about the Covenant and Forerunner tech and different things. Um, any sort of predictions on how she kind of comes back into the story? Do we kind of see more of the same? Or do you think maybe she, during the six months that we have between seasons that maybe her passions or goals have shifted and they're doing something completely different? Yeah, I don't. That's another character that I'm I'm confused about because you know unlike Cortana where you know while I don't really know where we're going with her I I know she has to come back um, Miranda like you know even in Core Canon she doesn't feel like that significant a role like she's in Halo uh, two and three and you know obviously we know what happens to her in three but um, like she, she kind of feels she's part of that story, but she's not like, she's just not that vital of a character. You could kind of fill her in with whomever. Well, she, I think she's kind of the face of, of that like pl- pl- platoon or, you know, the, the, the forces that she commands and fights alongside chief going to Delta Halo. I think she's more or less that commanding officer, you know? Y- yeah, she is. She feels, I think she fills her dad's role from the game. Yeah, from from CE, I guess. Well, kind of, sort of. I mean, he was not really there most of the game. Well, right, but I mean, he was. It was, yeah, he wasn't as much in the story, but he's sort of that commander of the U.S. UNSC, the Marine Forces, in uh, in the first game, and then she sort of fills that role along alongside uh, Johnson as well, but fills that role of sort of the the lead of the regular Marines, right? It's the that's the role they fill. Yeah, and I think her her sort of um, relevance in the story kind of gets a little bit more uh, forward-facing towards the end of Halo 2 and then definitely in, like, the resistance fight of Halo 3. So, yeah, I I think it would would be great to give the TV Miranda more of a spotlight because it seems that she's been in the shadows for so long trying to claw her way out of things and people like Miranda Mm -hmm. or the people like... Halsey and Parangoski seem to always just kind of push her down. And even Keys, you know, gives her some motivational talk here and there, but for the most part also doesn't really give her that much of a pedestal to be on. So to kind of have her be a little bit more relevant is something that I would definitely want for her because she she does have an important role in the games and she's a good companion to have that it'd be great to kind of see her a little bit more in that light in this new season. I agree. I just, I just don't know because her dad's still around, and we really haven't even, you know, approached that part of the story. Presume, you know, assuming that's we even, you know, get close to kind of the uh, Captain Keys, Miranda Keys, kind of, you know, how how they fit into the lore in in the main story in the in the core canon. I just don't know where we're going with her because you know she's she's sort of stepping out of her father's shadow in the games, and you know she's filling that role, and she's putting on a brave face and leading the troops and all that. And, you know, her dad's still there, right? He's still, in, like, we haven't even really seen him do a whole lot yet in, in the show. Um, and yeah, last that's, season, that's definitely true. And last season, she didn't feel, she filled a very different role. So I don't, yeah, as a character, I'm not sure what we're doing with her yet. I know she's in the, in the show still, so she's going to show up. Um, I, yeah, I'm just curious to see what they, what they do with her because, um, there is a lot they could do because right, it, it's something that she it doesn't really get touched on very much. Is it did I mean it did in season one, but like in the games that she's the daughter of of Doctor Halsey and, and Captain Keys, and there's a whole thing there. Um, it gets mentioned in core canon, but it doesn't really get addressed a ton. No, it's definitely not like 
um, focused on in core canon. Like it's something that they're really pushing, or at least last season. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, that kind of made sense from a television point of view. Like any way you can try to wrap character relations together like that, I think is is a is a strong motivator. Was it effective on screen at the end of the day? I don't particularly yeah. think it was. But but that is something that on paper is easy conflict, so to speak. Right. Is these exactly. personalities and these and these very direct um, familial relationships um, to kind of invite conflict and things and, and character tension between each other, and that's what TV shows are all about. So mm-hmm. it um yeah, it didn't really translate that well in season one. Are they going to try to? do it a different way in season two or try to maybe abandon it a little bit and try to make these characters kind of be who they are. Cause now Halsey's not really in the triangle, so to speak. And mm-hmm. here's a hot take. What if keys dies this season? Oh boy. So then now Miranda has to, has to take up this mantle, you know, that, that could be a, a, a call of action or something instead of waiting for yeah. the flood to infect him and, and kill him that way, you know, presumably in a season from now, you know what if what if they change it to where he dies at the fall of reach that is it you know what that that's a very good point that would almost make more sense from a character standpoint because yeah that was the that's the issue i have with her is she's she doesn't really there's no role for her to fill right now um because they're all kind of filled by all the other characters so so yeah where do yeah where does she fit in there and that make, that makes sense if she's step like doing the same thing like you said like stepping out of her father's shadow but but he's dying in the fall of reach instead of um instead of on on alpha halo or or wherever that makes sense um i don't know exactly what they do beyond that but that would make sense in terms of yeah her stepping into that See, and, and then then she would be in a similar role you know maybe she's he's the you know what that now that we kind of mentioned this in the commentary but like we talked about how keys is now a, uh an admiral he's not a captain and like where do we go with that do does he does he become a captain again, or like where does it go, or does he just yeah, like you said, does he die and yeah. then and then Miranda does he command a ship, a or right. is he more above the platoons and he's he's of a more uh, maneuver maneuvering sort of leader as opposed to being in the engagements mm-hmm. and he has people under him so to speak, but also in in the silver timeline, Miranda's not a commander, she's. A doctor oh so like right. she doesn't have combat so that's another thing to throw in the mix that like you know how much of a military presence does she really gain if keys ends yeah. up dying or just really anything happen just, because she's more of a doctor scientist type of a character in the tv show so she is but she's i mean she's a she's in the military right she's an officer still right uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. I thought she was. But I don't know. Maybe they call I, her I, Doctor Keys. They do. So. I just thought she was also. I thought she was also an officer as well. I I could be wrong, but you know, in that case, she would. You know, she would still presumably be able to fill that role of uh, of captain or whatever. So it's that's a very like plausible her wardrobe theory. Was similar to Parangoski's wardrobe as opposed to Keys's wardrobe as being a military person, because that's something I noticed. In the promotional pictures of Ackerson, I was like, wait a minute, Ackerson's not wearing a uniform like Keyes is wearing a uniform. So, like, is he not a colonel? And, you know, they don't call him Colonel Ackerson. They call him Mr. Ackerson or James or Sir or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's a good theory. I I actually like that theory a lot. That's a good point. I you you might be onto something. Uh, I mean, I I just I just think of ways to make an engaging story and see what they do. Well, exactly. That's that. That's exactly where where I end up going, and, and that's why I was struggling. Is I just like, like I said, I don't. Here's another thing. So the, la- the last thing we'll touch on before we wrap up is um, Perez. So we have Corporal Talia Perez, who was rescued from sanctuary by the chief during that engagement, and she's a new character. She's named. She has lines, and she's here for the whole season, presumably. And it's kind of the same sort of thing with. Quan, at least how we met Quan in season one, where she was the only survivor from the attack on Magical. She came up into the UNSC. She even did a propaganda um, piece that Quan refused to do in season one. So there's a lot of parallels between these two characters and how they're introduced into the story. 
So now begs the question, well, how is their inclusion in the story relevant? Um, and we kind of saw how ineffective that was used with Quan. And so I'm I'm really curious to see what she's going to do. Because, like, how does she work in? Does she go on missions with Chief? Yeah. Like, who does she talk to? Like, she's a communications officer. Like, maybe she n- figures something out that the Covenant are going to attack the communication relay that's in reach. And maybe that's some sort of relevance. Or maybe she gets positioned there and effectively the same thing happens. Like, I don't know. It just seems kind of weird. And I'm a little cautious because it could spiral into a Quan 2.0 type of a thing if she's just kind of in the story with yeah. no real purpose. Uh, yeah, that's a good quite good point. I kind of, I didn't really think too much of it the first time around when I watched the, the episode. I kind of treated her as a somewhat of a throwaway character to, you know, just to fill that kind of, that, that role of, of just Marine who's, you know, who's there, who's, who survives. Um, but I think you're right. I, I, I'd have to look at the the cast listing to see whether or not she shows up in later episodes, but um, presumably if she does, then yeah, I guess we'll see more of her. Um, I'm not, yeah, I don't know exactly what she does. I'm guessing. I mean, she's got to die at the end of this season, right? <laughs> if she, I mean, if no, I, I know. Well, I'm being serious though. Like, you know, she, they sort of, if she does come back, oh, careful there. Um, if she does come back, um, like they kind of, they almost foreshadowed it in that opening scene right where he where chief is walking through and finding all the dead marines and then stumbles across her her body and she you know she's still alive you know i, I kind of almost feel like we're gonna get a similar scene towards the end of the season where um yeah she's she's there and you know maybe she's doing some sort of i guess she's sort of what filling a role of you know oni propaganda kind of right um as sort of the the the, the hero but like chief's a hero hero but she's sort of the the everyday hero Right. Is that is that kind of is that the the vibe you got as well? I didn't really look into her being a propaganda piece more than just being this face because, you know, the the UNSC is painting a narrative and, you know, they 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 lied that every civilian was rescued. They lied that Talia Perez helped um, like Mm -hmm. save them. You know, they, they, they lied about Master Chief's involvement in the entire engagement. So, like, it, it's, I don't, th- and, and judging from her facial expressions and the way she saluted Keys when she accepted the medal and all that, and even in the room that we see her before that scene in Ackerson's office, like, you really get the, or at least I got the sense that she doesn't agree with the propaganda, but she's doing it because she's been convinced that it's going to help the war effort, and yep. she's definitely internalizing and thinking about something maybe maybe just like replaying the events maybe she's still in shock to a degree and so she she's she doesn't know what's going on she's still trying to get her bearings is is what i interpret from from what we saw so like yes she is this propaganda person but i feel like it's an isolated thing like i don't think this is going to be become like uh, uh, this might be a bad example, but like Hunger Games, like when Jennifer Lawrence in the later movies and in the later book, like she had like a camera crew follow her around and the camera crew would take these heroic shots of her doing bow and arrow stuff so then mm. they can send that to the other districts so then they can raise like morale and stuff for the resistance to fight against the capital and all that kind of stuff. So like... I don't think Perez is going to go down that road and kind of become this. I mean, Chief kind of already is that character without, you know, all the flash. He just does what he does. So, um, but I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe she does do something like that. But I, I don't really see that. And But I'm just curious how she becomes relevant in the story. Um, because I... Like like I said, like she almost has the same beats to what Quan did episode one, um, with maybe even less character than what Quan was able to get. And I think episode one is Quan's strongest episode of the whole season, because uh, from there on it's just downhill. Like I think there was potential with Quan, and it just went completely out the window. Um, and so Perez is kind of the same. Like we don't know a whole lot and. 
she's a pretty face, so we'll see what <laughs> she's able to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's there's they could go a few ways with with her character, so I guess we'll see. Um, well, we went much longer than I was anticipating, but we still had I think a pretty engaging conversation about these characters that we didn't see. Um, I'm I apologize to the listeners who have already seen episode two and. <laughs> And we are either completely beating around a bush that we don't even know, or we are just completely off and wrong, and you guys are screaming like, oh my gosh, if only I watched the <laughs> second episode. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, it was very intentional that intentional that we did not watch the second episode because we wanted to have that type of conversation about this first episode without that knowledge. So I think Ian and I are going to be watching the second episode after we finish recording this. And then we'll get episode two recorded into you guys on our podcast feed. So I will go ahead and wrap this up. Ian, thank you so much for for joining me again. Um, We talked about kind of what you're looking forward to next episode on the previous uh, podcast episode. So we'll kind of not need to reiterate that. But um, I hope to have you on on another episode, maybe for a commentary analysis or maybe at the very end when we do some um, sort of like retrospective overall conclusions to, you know maybe season three talk and all that kind of stuff that's yet to come you're you're the guinea pig so to speak <laughs> being episode one and uh and so i'm just i'm ready and excited to kind of continue on this journey with the other hosts and the listeners and other halo fans to kind of just see how season two unfolds because Like we mentioned at the beginning of the commentary episode, both of us feel that this was a strong out of the gate episode and, um, you know, they they had a lot to kind of live up to or not not live up to, but they had a lot to improve upon over last last season. And we think that they they made a good first impression and it's all about maintaining that level and then keep raising the bar. So, um, yeah, I hope to to have you on. Yeah, I, future, I, I definitely want to be back on because I, I, I think I, I went out there and made uh, quite a few predictions on how this episode or how this season is going to end, um, and I'm hope I'm right. Well, some, some of it, I hope I'm right. Uh, I guess we'll see, we'll see how right I am. But um, yeah, I, I'd like to be on and and get get either uh, all the congrats or get uh, chastised for being uh, such an idiot and not seeing where the season will go. But uh, yeah, yeah. Either way, yeah. love love to be back on and uh, and see see where we end up at, at the end of this. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, if you're interested, Alex Wakeford releases his silver debriefing blog post every well, it says here every Monday, but it's actually already out, and today is Friday. Uh, so I wonder if that will change going forward. So apologize for this script, but um, he has already released. Um, the, the silver debrief for this episode, Sanctuary, on Halo Waypoint. So you can check that out. It is a blog that recaps the story of each episode in detail and serves as a hub for additional show-related content, as well as providing some more details and insights into certain core canon aspects of the show. So it's a great companion piece to our podcast and the show. I recommend everyone go check it out. I don't think it's necessary to just recap it here um, just go and read it and uh, get your own um, and, you know, information and, and things from him. Um, if you want to read, like I said, if you want to read the Silver Briefings blog for Sanctuary, you can head over to Halo Waypoint right now. Um, again, thank you, Ian, for joining us. Listeners, thank you for joining us for another week of Halo TV+. Plus. Halo the series premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus every Thursday morning at midnight Pacific time. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode of all of our shows that Evolve produces on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. It also features links to our Discord server, Patreon page, and our social media platforms. Once again, another shout out to all of our patrons for supporting Evolve and making all of our shows possible. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon uh, for Patreon, head over to Patreon.com slash Halo Evolve to learn more. Um, because there was a double season premiere, double episode premiere for season two, we will be recording and releasing episode two, Sword, a commentary and analysis this week before episode three launches on February 15th. So keep an eye out for that on your feed, likely tomorrow after you're done listening to this. 
If you're a fan of the show, rate us and leave us a review. We greatly appreciate all the feedback that we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of our shows. You can also leave us an email at podcastevolved at gmail.com or a voicemail at our Google phone number, which is 205-386-5833. And with that, I have been your host, Oren. And until next time, evolve. Evolve.